Okay, another cool feature that you can bring into your landscape, maybe a lake if you wanted to. So I'm going to build a lake here and show you how you can accomplish that one way. So here I worked on my uh, mountains a little more. Um, you know, probably end up working on them some more. But you start with the terrain, start with the mountainscape. Okay, I'm going to edit it. Again, I'm going to go up and uh, turn on my flange slider tool. Bring up the edges here so I can uh, have a more natural looking uh, edge on there, not so square. Check that. Okay. Now I'm going to just uh, make this larger because I want to. I want the lake to be fairly substantial here, pretty good size. So you may have to resize and move the mountainscape around until it fits exactly where you want it. Essentially, we're going to be using the mountain to uh, cut into the uh, floor. So we're going to be using a Boolean intersection like we did on the previous assignment. Okay, so let me get this uh, going here the way I like. Okay, and looking at it from a top view, you can see where it is in relation to the mountain. So move that away a little bit. You can rotate it. That looks good. Okay, go back to uh, director's view here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is position it and then rotate it. Okay. So now I'm going to turn it, rotate it upside down, and I'm going to move this down into the floor. It's going to go beneath the surface of the floor. Okay, making it a little larger first. So there you can see how it's sinking down into the floor. Again, I'm going to create a big hole basically in the ground. Okay. Okay, I'm just kind of I want to have some land around it so I can add some other features. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay. Oh, I don't want to go into edit. You want to go to A, Attributes. Again, change the uh, mountainscape to negative because that's going to cut into the floor. The floor obviously has to be positive, right, under Attributes. Check. Now you're going to group them together. Be careful not to group anything else, too, while you're at it. I accidentally got that mountainscape in the back, so I have to shift-click on that to deselect it. And I'm going to go to a top view to make sure my camera is not selected, and it isn't, so we're good there. Okay, so now G for group. And now when you look at it, you should see a big hole in the ground, and yep, there it is. But you can still see the texture of the original uh, mountain. So again, you can create these nice valleys, even, if you will, to create some interesting uh, formations there. Um, but we're going to add a, a lake in there, so I'm going to add some water, basically. Um, first, though, let's see, I'm going to move this around a little more and regroup it. Okay, there it is ungrouped, so you can see how it's sticking up from the ground, but we're going to group it again, and it'll cut in. I wanted to leave some land surface around. So again, select your uh, both your surfaces, G for group, and there you go. So there's your lake, and now you, we just need to add water. Although that looks kind of cool, too. You could cut into your surface and create some eroded canyons and things like that. 
And notice the render time is increasing here. Again, as you add detail into these floor surfaces, into the terrains, all those um, textures, it's going to slow down your rendering times immensely. So what I'm going to do is create a cylinder, and I'm going to have that cylinder cover the area that's being cut into. So I'm going to zoom in from a top view. I'm going to cover that whole area that looks to be the lake. And the cylinder is going to provide the water texture. Okay, so you can resize the individual points if you want. Get it so it's fitting pretty well and not disturbing other areas. doesn't have to be exactly perfect because you're going to be bringing it down under the floor surface anyway. But I like to try to get it as close as I can to avoid any problems later. Okay, again, so there's your um, cylinder. So now you can resize it a little bit, bring it down a little bit. You don't want to bring it, make it too small, though. You want, the, want it to show up uh, as a thick water texture. So with the, for the rest of the way, I'm going to just bring it down using the, uh, the Y uh, repositioning tool. So again, it's under the floor surface. But when you click on it here, you can see it showing up because of that negative boolean. So now you have a lake area. Now you just need to add a water texture to it. So let's go up to textures. We'll go into, there's actually waters down below if you haven't seen that. And let's try a couple of water textures and see what we get. Let's try red ripple. So you click on that and that looks kind of cool. The reflections look a little unrealistic. The swirls are a little too large from my point of view here, um, but it's looking pretty good. Okay, this is a swamp texture. That looks good. That looks pretty believable. You're getting a reflection of the sky. And again, starting to look photorealistic, so I'm going to stick with that. Um, so that's an easy way that you can make a lake and uh, make it convincing. Just take a, land, a terrain or a mountain range, turn it upside down, bring it down into the floor, make a Boolean intersection between that and the floor, and then add a primitive in there with a water texture to... Uh, give the illusion that there's a lake there in your landscape.